Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Gian Francis Kumar. I'm from the French speaking part of Switzerland. Ich kann fünf Sprachen sprechen. Yingwen, Fawen, Chungwen, Ruwen, Imawa, Deutsch Go, Manande Imas. In this video, we will be talking about how to study a language in a smarter and more efficient way. What is your biggest challenge in learning a new language? You spent a long time learning vocabulary and you worked so hard, but you suddenly discovered you forgot everything. Your fear of making mistakes is what is holding you back. And perhaps you also feel nervous and not confident enough when you're about to engage in a conversation in your target language. If you're struggling with these situations, don't worry, we have some tips for you. When I was a child and teenager in Switzerland, we were forced to learn German, already quite an intimidating language by itself. They taught us this language in the most horrible way possible, with endless vocabulary lists and grammar and drills and whatnot. So back then, I actually hated language learning. But later on, when I started learning languages for myself, I discovered that language learning could be fun, efficient, and even become a lifestyle. The first tip we have is to learn the right words the right way. Starting a new language means you have to learn a bunch of new words. Many people quit before they even started with some excuses such as, oh, my memory is not good, I'm not built to learn languages, and, or I'm too old, and so on. The key here is you don't need to know each and every single word in a language to be able to speak it or converse in it. There's something called the Pareto Principle, which means with 20% of effort, you will be able to comprehend 80% of a language. Example, in English, just 300 words make up 65% of all written material. Using flashcard methods that implement a spaced repetition system, also known as SRS, could be an efficient way to practice new vocabulary. Glossika brings up sentences over and over. This will help you learn them through repetition. It also asks for feedback. So, for instance, if a sentence was too hard for you, you will see it appear more often. And if it was too easy, you will see it less often. The good thing is, you don't need to memorize everything with Glossika. You can review as many times as you want before adding new words. Our second tip is to learn cognates. These are your friend in every single language. These are words you recognize from your native language that have the same meaning in your target language. Many English words were borrowed from other languages like French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and many others. For example, action, nation, solution, tradition. These are spelled exactly the same in French. In Spanish, you just change the final T-I-O-N to Sion, in Italian to Zione, in Portuguese to Sao. To find common words with the language you are learning, simply search for your target language name cognates or target language name English loanwords to see words they borrowed from us. And finally, you can search for your target language name words in English to see words we borrowed from them. Our third tip is to interact in your target language daily without traveling. No time and no money to visit the country is not an excuse anymore. Nowadays, technology makes it possible for us to hear and use a language consistently to be immersed in it. You can do this without leaving your community, your own home or even your bed. The key is to put yourself into situations where language learning is inevitable. Glossika has high quality audio recorded by native speakers. By listening and repeating after the native speakers on Glossika, you will be able to improve your fluency in all aspects of language learning. Our fourth tip, to expand your vocabulary using mnemonics. Mnemonics is when you tell yourself a funny, silly or otherwise memorable story to associate a word with a particular idea. There are two basic types of mnemonics that we can use in language learning. One is word associations, the other is mnemonic images. Using mnemonics helps glue the word to your memory way more effectively. For instance, you can have the word caber in Spanish, which means to fit. And it, for an English speaker like me, a ca cap, cap sounds like a cap, right? And bear sounds like a bear. So you can sort of create the sort of situation in your head where you're trying to fit a bear into a cap, caber, to fit. So that would be uh, an example of a mnemonic. Again, there's no fixed rules here, so be free to use your creativity uh, and come up with your own original and interesting mnemonic uh, devices. Our tip number five is to embrace your mistakes. Sometimes when you're speaking language, you sort of say something wrong and are corrected by a native speaker and you feel embarrassed. You don't want to say that word ever again, right? That actually is the biggest mistake you can make. Learn how to be tolerant with yourself and accept mistakes as part of the process, even as an opportunity to learn something new. 
retreating inside yourself and thinking too much will just paralyze you and affect your ability to communicate effectively in that language. Languages should not be acquired by rote learning alone. They need to be used. Don't worry about upsetting native speakers for being so bold as to speak to them in, in their own native language. One of the best things you can do in the initial stages of learning a language is not to try to be perfect in everything, but to embrace making mistakes. If you can get the big idea what you across, you've done well. It doesn't have to be grammatically perfectly approved by the Académie Française or whatnot. Try to drop your ego and stop getting embarrassed by mistakes. Tip number six, create SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T. These goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So we start with specific. Set a specific language you want to learn, obviously. Measurable. Use a European common framework that can help you define your language level and the language level you aspire to. For example, A1, B1, B2. Goals should be attainable. You have to break down further how you're going to achieve your goal. So for example, in my experience, I've actually found that the fluency B2 level can be achieved in a matter of months, as long as you stay focused on the spoken aspect of the language. Relevant, focusing on speaking and listening and maybe reading makes fluency in a few months much more realistic. Time bound, create a short end point of a few months. Pick a definite point and aim to achieve your target by that time, by that deadline. On Glossika, you can set a daily learning goal for yourself. Glossika makes use of reps as reps in the gym to measure your progress and so you can actually see if you hit your daily goals. In each new session, you got five new sentences in a total of 25 reps. Tip number seven, find a conversation partner. If you want to immerse yourself without leaving home, you need to find someone to talk with on a regular basis. That's where the conversation partner comes in. A conversation partner does not need to be a teacher. In fact, sometimes it's better if your conversation partner is not a teacher because your goal is not to drill new vocabulary or new grammar. It is actually just having a friendly conversation with a native speaker in a relaxed, natural fashion. That friendly conversation can help you practice what you're learning at home and give you a feel for the flow of the language. It can also help you stay motivated since you know you'll need to use your language skills at least once or twice a week. To find a partner, start by talking to your friends, family members, and you can also use Facebook or other social networking websites to ask for suggestions or maybe directly ask for a talking partner. Perhaps you can also try to join a language exchange community online. Tip number eight, try to sound more like a native. Time spent with a native or just practicing your speaking with an app for a few hours may be all that you need actually. What is more important but often overlooked is intonation, the pitch, rise, fall and stress of your words. For example, I'm learning Chinese right now and those aspects are super important. People often ask me if I have a different personality when I switch from one language to the other and the answer is yes. For instance, when I'm speaking Japanese, I tend to be very polite, like, ah, sumimasen, hai, ah, wakarimashita, hai, da, ja, dewa. When I'm speaking French, uh, I'm like the skunk in the, in the Looney Tunes. I'm like, hey, bonjour, comment ça va? Because I learned Chinese in China, not in Taiwan, my Chinese is a bit rough. It's like, ni cho shamani, yo bing ma. Speaking German, I can be a bit aggressive, like, hallo, was machst du? Kommt hier. So, German is quite a strong language. I do believe languages influence your whole personality. Everyone has different situations and different learning styles, different motivations. Just try to find the most appropriate method to achieve your goal. So as you've noticed by now, this is a Glossika channel. But actually, uh, speaking from my own experience, I do feel that Glossika provides some very interesting features that can make it a very interesting tool for somebody starting in a new language. It's method that is not reliant on rote memorization of vocabulary or grammar and just uses written sentences which are spoken at the same time by a native speaker is actually the best way to learn an, a new language. Thanks for listening. I hope this video was helpful for your needs. I'm actually curious also uh, as to what language you're learning, what difficulties you're experiencing. Do you need any tips or help or do you have any advice to share with us? Please leave your comments, questions and insights in the comment section below. Thank you very much and have a nice day.